21 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. And pursuant to Governor Baker's emergency order modifying the state's open meeting law issued March 12th, 2020, this meeting will be held using remote participation. Um, the meeting is being recorded by the city. We always begin these meetings um, with general public comment. And if any of the individuals joined us who are not members of the commission who have anything they would like to bring up that is not related to any of the items on the agenda, this would be the opportunity to do that. Oh, okay, we have one individual. Um, is it Claudia? Hi, did you say items not related? Correct. Oh, so I have one related, so I'll stop, sorry. Okay, that's great. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, we will begin by um, approving the minutes from our Wednesday, February 24th, 2021 meeting. Um, did all the members have a chance to review those? I realize Harvey and Jonathan, you um, were not present at the meeting, but those of you who were, yes, we were. oh, were you? You were, um, you were not listed on the agenda as president, I think because at that point you weren't official meeting right. uh, commissioners, okay. but you observed. Thank you for correcting me. For those of the commissioners who were uh, legal at that time, <laughs> any comments on the uh, agenda, I mean, the minutes? No, I, I think they looked good. I would move to approve them. I just had one comment. Um, and again, I would, uh, I'm not sure about this. I'm asking the other commissioners on the issue with the windows at 330 Elm. Um, I realize um, that Pauline, I think that you did ask for a comparison in price. I believe I also requested that um, a window restoration specialist look at these. Um, if anybody, um, Sarah had, had recorded that um, it would be good to see someone do that, but not that I requested it. Does anybody remember whether it was a specific request or not? I, I think it might have, now that you mentioned it, I think it was a specific request. Okay, anybody else? Can you, anyone else affirm that? So I had it. Um, I had it noted as part of the motion uh, to request a window restoration estimate and also to continue the hearing. Right, the estimate, but I, I had asked that there would be um, an a restoration evaluation done. Okay, an assessment. Yes. That was an evaluation. It. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you don't mind correcting that, um, then I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Okay, for a second. Second. Thanks, Dylan. <clears throat> we have to vote, right, Sarah? Correct, and it does have to be roll call. Um, yeah. Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Craig? Yes. Pauline? So, Pauline. No, I did see Pauline here before, but I don't see her here now. Okay. And uh, Harvey and Jonathan, since you weren't sworn in yet, I'll, I'll strip you. So it's unanimous for the, the people who are here. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, the next item is electing a chair and a vice chair. Now, um, we've been without an official chair and, and no vice chair. Well, I guess we did have an official chair who was using for official vice chair who was serving as chair, and that's myself. The last couple of Full slate of commissioners. We're a full board. Um, I think this would be a good time to uh, vote in a, an official chair and a vice chair. Um, that said, I um, have enjoyed serving in this position for the last couple of years. I'm willing to continue, but I also don't want to step in anyone else's way if they would be interested in assuming the role. Well, I, for one, would be delighted to have you continue, Martha. I think you've been doing a really good job. 
<laughs> somebody's telling me to endorse time. that as well. <laughs> I second that. I yeah, third absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Sarah, how do we handle? Should we both the both both the two vice and chair together, or do they have to be separate? I, it could it could be either way. Okay. So then the, the question is, um, who would like to um, step in and step up and um, serve as vice chair? Um, I you know as I, I attempt to make every one of these meetings as best I can, um, I do travel a fair amount for work, but the last year has been pretty stationary. So um, I do try to make the meetings, but occasionally I may not be able to. And then the vice would have to step in. And serve. Is anybody interested at all? I mean, if nobody else were, I would be willing to do that. Um, it's not terribly burdensome. <laughs> so. And I, I, I seconded Barbara that. as okay, the vice chair. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any other thoughts about that? Would be great, Barbara. Thank you for offering. Um, Okay, uh, if that's the what we would like to do, then um, I would entertain a motion to approve or appoint or elect uh, myself as chair and Barbara Blumenthal as vice chair. And that would be, is that for a year, Sarah, or is it a longer term? It's a year. A year, okay, great. So we can rethink all of this in, in 12 months. <laughs> I like that idea. Does anyone wanna make a motion? So moved. I second. Okay. So vote. Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Craig? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And Pauline? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. Great. Um, before we move on to the next item, I just wanted to um, mention two items of interest. Um, first is um, Sarah got married last week. I wanted to just bring that up and oh, have a congratulations. Her. congratulations. <laughs> That's important, Sarah, that everybody know. I know if you're a little like, shy nice. about it, but it's a big deal. So. <laughs> Congratulations from all of us. Thank you very um, much. And Dylan, I just wanted to thank you, especially because I know you're under the weather tonight and I appreciate you stepping in uh, to keep the quorum in order. So it's much appreciated. You're welcome. All right. Uh, so let's see, um, we're gonna move on now to the continuation of the local historic district um, item. So this is all you probably all remember. This is, re uh, is a request for a local historic district certificate of hardship for appropriateness pursuant of section 195 of the Northampton Code for proposed window replacement. Um, this is the property owned by Dallas Tuhar and Perry Cohen at 313, excuse me, 330 Elm Street. Uh, Pella Windows is also representing the project. And the map ID is 31A-002. Um, and there were several items that were um, submitted to support this application. I don't know if the commissioners had a chance to look at all of those. Um, a number of um, documents, um, some about historic window repair and replacement processes, um, some cost information, uh, um, a, a booklet or brochure about window restoration. Um, so as you all remember, we and we just reiterated in the minutes a minute ago that um, the last time we looked at this, we had specifically asked that the applicant have an assessment done by a window restoration specialist and also an estimate to compare the cost. Um, and before I go any further, are, is there is the applicant present tonight at the meeting? Okay, so we do not have representation. 
Um, would anybody like to comment on the materials that were presented to us based um, based on on what we discussed at our last meeting, our February meeting, and then um, what was presented to us tonight for the meeting? I, it appears to me that window restoration is a lot more expensive than replacing the windows. Um, that's what I, the, the summation that I got from there, from the materials that were submitted. So it seems to me, and um, it may not be as energy efficient as newer windows um, either. So it appears to me that uh, the most efficient way for them to go about it is to replace the windows. And um, if we're looking at the window replacement, then I would like to see um, it be consistent with what the guidelines propose. Okay. okay. Anybody else? You know, when I read all this material and one of the things that struck me um, and I didn't, I took some notes, but I didn't really note which, what, what came from what report that I wrote down, but, and I know that the, these replacement windows would be um, at least would, I think on the inside was what they were proposing, but they're clad on the outside. Is that true? Does anybody remember that or can confirm that? But anyway, I think that's it's wood, wood, but I think wood windows and obviously the original windows of this house, that they really are an important carry, character defining feature of a house of this, even you know this era, obviously an older house as well. But um, it also, one of some of the key findings I noticed were that retrofit measures that can achieve performance results comparable to replacement windows Obviously that varies greatly. Mm -hmm. And I read that even though it's more expensive that almost every retrofit option offers better investment return than replacements. So I kind of came away with a different point of view than Pauline, you seem to be expressing. Mm -hmm. um, also, there was some of the reports emphasized that windows really aren't the first place you go to try and get energy efficiency if you're having a problem, and again, I don't know if the HVA system in the house has already been upgraded or other energy um, issues could be dealt with as well. I know that a lot of the windows or some of the windows, particularly I think around the back have already were replaced and they're not even, they're not gonna do anything with those. So we have, but I'd certainly, I think I would feel best if the windows that face Elm Street if there would really be an attempt to keep those original windows and repair those windows and windows in other parts of the house that aren't visible from a public way, that those could be still, according to the guidelines, um, replacement windows. That's how I feel most comfortable. Mm. Greg, do you have any comments? Did you call me, Martha? Craig, yes. <laughs> yes. I, um, it's been my experience that the first thing you do when you buy a new house, the proper thing to do is not to go and default switch out the windows. That would not be the best and brightest solution. The first thing is to call in Mass Aid. Not only for free will they do an energy audit of the house, they'll perform a complete spreadsheet and payback of every task that they show as deficient and what the task would cost, book price, and what the task would cost with uh, their special discounts and coupons. So, I would suggest that the proponents do that first, spend a few years going down the task list of energy efficiency brought forward by a mass save for free, do the tasks that are most valuable in terms of payback, and then come back to us with another look at the windows. And I sent Sarah a host of information about restoring historic windows. 
And um, one of the biggest untruths in America today is to go to replace your windows with vinyl windows. You will always live to see the failure of your vinyl windows. They are never fine. So that's my suggestion here is to, uh, since there are new homeowners there, is to commission a mass save energy audit and follow the tasks as laid out in the spreadsheet of what the payback is best benefit to them. And then do the windows. Mm -hmm. so. I, I wanted to add that I thought that I remembered them saying when they were at uh, the meeting, I think the first meeting is that they did spend a lot of money um, on the heating system of the house. Um, so I think that they have addressed some of those issues um, making it more efficient by updating the uh, heating, um, the heating system. I know but, that the previous owners uh, had a major league asbestos remediation program in that house. So I know that there was some upgrades done to the heating system prior to their arrival, mm -hmm. but they really need to do the energy audit. That's my opinion. That make you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, we don't we don't know if they've done that. I wish I wish you would have asked that the last meeting because it would have been an, a good point to make and to ask them whether they'd done that. Also, ironically, there's a um, I think I sent the notice to Sarah and I think Sarah, you said you were sending it on to the homeowners that tomorrow it's that it's tomorrow wasn't before today. Tomorrow, um, Historic New England is having a, a, a webinar a presentation about. Um, windows in older houses, which I plan to, I've signed up for because I'm interested in it. I have an old house myself and some windows in bad shape, um, but we also were recommending it for these homeowners if they were interested to, to listen to that as well. There was a webinar um, late last week about um, window restoration from the from a New York State organization as well, and I did pass that along to the applicants, oh, but I don't know if they attended or not. Yeah, and I actually did participate in that webinar and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but Dylan, I wanted to uh, give, give you an opportunity. Um, yeah, Pauline, I think I remember that as well about them saying that they had done some work. Um, but I, I think I came away with the same, from looking at the documentation that was sent with the same conclusions as Barbara, especially the National Trust for Historic Preservation document um, seemed fairly clear that it wasn't necessarily um, a huge savings that you had to really look at the whole the whole project and with the documentation that seems to have been sent along by the applicants there didn't seem to be anything specific to this house and this project it seemed more anecdotal and general um, so to me that wasn't what I was expecting um, before this meeting as in order to make a decision that there was hardship or, uh, you know, it just wasn't concrete enough information for me to arrive at that conclusion right now. Jonathan and Harvey, I realize you're not able to vote on this because you were not um, at the initial hearing, but we'd be happy to hear any comments from you. Thank you. I, I don't I have nothing to add. I, I fear that everyone else on this uh, call has got more wisdom on this issue than I. Mm -hmm. Jonathan? I don't have anything to add at this point. Okay. Um, well, just I appreciate everyone's uh, looking over the materials and thinking about this. Uh, I did attend this. The uh, it was, It's the Preservation League of New York State. Um, that is the state advocacy organization for New York. Um, the corollary in Massachusetts is Preservation Mass. Mass. And um, just a couple of things that I came away with it um, with, from it is um, one is that, and I think this was in some of the materials that were sent, um, windows that were made before 1950s often were made from old growth growth forests. And so the wood is very, very long lasting. Today, uh, we don't have wood like that. So most windows that are made today that are wood 
last 20 years. Um, and because people don't own their houses for more than 20 years, typically, some of us do, <laughs> but uh, not everybody, um, you know, that's kind of what they're geared, the, the shelf life is geared towards is these, this overturning of property. Um, the one thing that also struck me too, and this was a, it was actually a great webinar because it went through everything, but um, there was an issue I remember with the property on Elm as uh, having lead paint and lead paint um, can be encapsulated and that's typically how it's handled on a window situation. So you don't have to actually strip the whole thing unless you want to, you don't have to, it, it can be encapsulated. And then um, the other part of it was that even windows that are rotted, and I don't recall any rot on all the photos that they submitted in their application, um, but even when there's rot, there can be repairs made to the rot, um, Dutchman repairs and that kind of thing. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to really study what's going on with these windows. And I, I would just, again, advocate for having a, a a window restoration specialist look at them and do an assessment um, and then we'll make a decision. We just I don't feel like everyone said that we really have the information um, that we need. And also, I just wanted to mention that one of the um, I guess it was an article um, that was submitted uh, was called Historic Window Repair and Replacement Processes. And this was one that really advocated for not replacing historic windows or advocated for not saving historic windows um, and it was written by a, a a window replacement company so i um i think we have to sort of take that one with a little caution so that's what i have to add uh would anybody else like to comment and if not um i would entertain a motion for uh either awarding a certificate, awarding a certificate of hardship, or yeah, continuing. Yeah. Talk. But you can talk now. Wait, not now. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? OK, would someone like to make a motion? Um, I'll make a motion um, that, uh, well, so if, if I guess I, I do have a question before a motion comes. And that is if we, you, because you, you had said a motion to award a certificate of hardship or to continue the hearing about this or continue the issue to another meeting. We can't, um, but is our option also just to say we want, are not awarding a certificate of appropriateness? Is that an option as well? Denying it, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah denying it. Denying. I would imagine so, yeah. Right, and they could reapply if we did that, I assume. Well, mm -hmm. have, have they applied yes. for a certificate of hardship? You're, you're muted. You're Sarah. muted, Sarah. <laughs> it's, it's not a separate application for a certificate of hardship if it follows uh, a certificate of appropriateness application. So the, uh, this came in as a request for certificate of appropriateness. Uh, so if the commission doesn't find that the work um, or the circumstances merit a certificate of hardship and doesn't find that the, the work meets the, um, the, the guidance, then an option would be to deny a certificate of appropriateness. Because I'm not, I don't know if it's, useful to continue this i know you had said the 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 applicant neither the applicant nor somebody from Pella windows neither of them are here tonight right so i don't know how to interpret that that they're not here tonight and maybe they in sending us that information they thought that was adequate but i feel like it's not something that I mean, it's possible in another month they could come up with a solution that would make us happy. So we could, try, it's fine with me just to continue it. Um, but I'm not convinced that that's gonna get a result. You know, we're just gonna keep continuing this or we could deny, you know, if we felt that we didn't wanna issue a certificate of appropriateness, we could then say, you're, you're welcome to reapply. Mm -hmm. 
on another card. So so yeah. Yeah, I think, um, Barbara, if that's what you you think is the best solution, it's certainly reasonable to um, make that motion mm -hmm. and we can discuss it. Okay, well, I'll just also just make, start the discussion. I will move that we deny a certificate of, appropriate, of appropriateness, but as long as that doesn't, you know, prevent them from applying again. So that's my to, to deny the certificate of appropriateness. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? I, I would just say that I think um, Barbara's motion does send a pretty clear message that um, we don't feel that the um, our requests were properly addressed. Um, they didn't appear for us again before us again. Uh, the materials they sent were not specific to the house. There was no assessment. Um, I mean, I think that information could get relayed back to them. So, and then we could encourage them to reapply or ask them if they just open the door for them to reapply if they would like to, but they would need to have all of that information together. If there's anything that the commission would like to add to the denial, if um, the, before the vote happens, you know, take a look at the um, the design guidelines and add that to the motion. Yeah, there there is a re the requirement for assessment if in a in a notation in the guidelines that um, all of the windows in a house shouldn't be replaced, for example. Okay. Any other any other comments? Okay, then we should vote. Martha? Yes, on the motion. Barbara? Uh, yes. Dylan? Yes. Craig? Yes. And Pauline? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Um, all right, the next one on the agenda is, and sorry, you'll be getting back to them, correct? Yes, um, I'll follow up with them when I issue, when I, I issue the denial. The denial, okay. All right, um, the next item on the agenda is the BAMC, Veterans Affairs Medical Center, proposed modifications review. This is for exterior walls and roof to a new addition to an existing building seven. And I believe Josie is here. Um, yeah. Uh, there she is, Josie Galton. I saw you earlier. <laughs> um, do you have drawings that you wanna show us? Do you have a, do you want a screen share or how would you like to handle this? Um, I have, my architect is on as well. I don't know if Roy, if you want to um, screen share, but I, I do uh, have just a quick intro onto the project. And um, and I believe some of, I sent Sarah the drawings a little bit earlier. I'm not sure if you got them, if we can't screen share. We did get them, Josie. Okay. Yeah, perfect. All right, so um, this is a little bit different than we've done before. Um, so this is not uh, coming in at the beginning of the section 106 process and asking for comments um, to be relayed to the state. This is more for us as we're developing the project. Um, so before the section 106 is even submitted, we haven't formalized that process to get some uh, feedback from you all um, before we even get there to kind of give us a more robust um, uh, a package before, you know, so a step, a step before we have normally come before of the committee. Um, and so this is our residential rehab treatment program. It's our landmark um, mental health inpatient unit. Um, this is our second one on campus. This one's more for the psychosocial, uh, the mental health distress, substance abuse residential program. Um, and for this one, we are adding on about 14,000 
square feet of additional space. So we have, we have an existing building that's in the historical register. And then we have a whole new building uh, that's attached to it. Um, and um, right behind this, where the new building's gonna face is the new um, condos that were built on our campus. I'm not sure whether those went through the historical process that was before I got here, but they have a whole different, more modern facade and Roy can speak to that better than me. And so we were kind of looking to meld the two and bring it kind of more holistically. Um, and the other thing was, is from a cost perspective, putting uh, a masonry facade on is, is much more costly um, than doing something else. So we were kind of looking for some feedback um, for this new direction that we were gonna take. Um, we have presented to the, we have a VA and this came out of this meeting. So I, it might've been Barbara actually who mentioned this uh, or suggested this, but we do have a VA historical committee um, and we did present this to them, um, I believe earlier this month. Um, and, and so we have incorporated their comments as well. And so I can turn it over to Roy to kind of talk through the drawing and then um, to open it up to your feedback. Okay, um, before you go any further, um, Sarah, I'm gonna put you on the spot on this one. Um, we have two new commissioners and could you briefly explain to them the 106, like why we do this, like what it is and why we do it? Even though we're not at that point yet, Josie, I know, but it's, this is the, beginning of it. I understand. Uh, sure. So the section 106 is shorthand for activities that require um, either federal permitting or involve federal funding. Uh, and that triggers the, um, I'm not going to remember because I'm on the spot, the uh, National Historic Preservation Act, Martha, is that right? Um, so basically it's a it's a review at the, the state level. So Mass Historic weighs in as to whether the, the work being done um, that, that needs the federal permitting or federal funds will have any negative impacts on any historic resources. And the, uh, the local historical commission is a, a consulting party to that determination. And uh, I know previously when I, we've come before the committee, um, there's been some comments that we were just too late in the process. Um, just again, would allow us to incorporate those. Sorry. Martha, is it okay if Roy starts? Martha looks frozen. Uh, yes, Josie, I would say that that sounds great. Gotta love Zoom meetings. <laughs> maybe she's gonna come back. I think we lost her, but maybe she'll be back. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm sorry I don't have a more interactive um, uh, opportunity here with the drawings. Um, like Josie mentioned, we're attaching uh, something like 14,000 square feet to a slightly smaller structure. The existing structure is uh, exterior masonry. Um, it's a solid multi-wide masonry wall with uh, windows. The windows have been replaced. Oh, I don't know when, but uh, they're, they're not the original windows. These are all security windows because of the previous use of the building. Uh, so they're built into the walls and they're, uh, uh, they're all steel and um, uh, screwed shut for the most part. The roofs are all original slate from 1922, which has just about uh, lived its useful life and needs to be replaced on the existing building. We started out uh, our design with the new addition uh, to fit the program for the uh, residential rehabilitation treatment uh, program that Josie talked about, filling up about 40 beds in the unit. Uh, so when we put this together, uh, it was quite large. 
we tried to mimic the uh, existing roof with uh, uh, the pitches and slate um, uh, gables and what have you, uh, which was fine. We did a reasonable job with that. Uh, but like Josie said, the cost uh, got way out of hand for an exterior masonry wall and uh, the slate on the roofs and just the overlay construction that it took to build attic space that we didn't actually need. Uh, we tried to take advantage of the grades dropping off somewhere around 11 to 13 feet in the back of the building, uh, as well as um, some of the other site conditions there. Where we ended up was looking at another option that, like Josie said, blended more closely with uh, some of the other buildings on the opposite side of the street uh, would be if you're facing this elevation to your back. So they're smaller residential buildings, uh, more contemporary in their look. And across the street from that um, is uh, another structure that has uh, insulated metal panels on it, which is similar to some of the other uh, utility buildings on campus. So we got the idea of using um, insulated metal panels on this, uh, which was a cost savings of about 40% above and beyond the, the masonry. We removed, uh, because of the, the look of that, we removed the um, uh, gables on the roof and uh, as a cost savings saving measure. We tried to keep the window sizes the same as the existing windows so that we have some consistency there and tried to blend in some of the spacing of those windows in the same way while trying also to maintain the, the interior uh, fit up for um, the uh, bedrooms and things that we're working with. This gives you an idea of what the two spaces look like together. Where we join them together in the middle, you can't really see it in this elevation, but we've got a, a separation of, uh, uh, we tried to put a different material in between the two buildings so that there was some, some uh, break between the existing historic and the new um, insulated metal panels uh, on the building. Uh, the foundation that you're seeing there is an exposed concrete foundation um, and we were looking to put some uh, some texture on it that made it consistent with the other side which is also an exposed concrete foundation there's a band i don't know if you can see it or not there's a band that runs right along here that mimics the band that's on the other existing building um, so the windows are are fairly large, I think, for the spaces they're in. In the center here, there's a screened porch um, that we're, we're working on keeping. And what we've done in these recesses is infill it with some masonry that would recall the look of the existing building and just try to blend the two together and, and keep the con texture consistent. Uh, on the top of the building, uh, in the existing building, we have a fairly heavy cornice that we've mimicked on the, on the new addition, but rather than have the gable go back up, we've used a, a fascia band, whether it's white or not is up for grabs. We haven't finalized the colors, but we tried to use colors that were consistent with the, uh, with the color of the brick, or at least complementary to the colors of the brick. This doesn't do it justice on this rendering uh, simply because the computer screen doesn't, doesn't jump through the same hoops we'd like it to. Um, but overall, I think that's the, the general idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. We're not finished with the design yet, so there's plenty of details to work out. But uh, like Josie said, we like to get some feedback as to what, you, uh, what your sense is on this. I guess, Sarah, that opens the floor to any kind of feedback you have. So can, can I just ask Roy, this is Barbara. Um, I just want to make sure I understand what I'm looking at that on the corners, like on the left of it, on the new building, that's a window that that's on both sides meeting at the corner. That's correct. OK. We have to work out details on that. Right. Um, but that's the idea. So that corner unit would have a very nice view. Uh -huh. In the recesses, um, 
I keep pointing at it like you guys can see my finger. But, uh, right in this area right here in the recesses, we've got some fairly large windows right. uh, just because we thought it broke up the elevation better and gave uh, just a better look to the building. Mm -hmm. Do other people have comments? Other commissioners? Questions? I have a question. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is the roof really flat or is it pitched? Um, it's pitched toward the center of the building where there would be um, four uh, roof drains. Thank you. Um, and on this facade that we're seeing here um, at the end of the building, mm -hmm. is that it's going to be just a blank wall except for the corner windows? Um, that's up for grabs at the moment because of the way the layout of the room is. Uh, it lended itself better to having the window toward the corner, um, but we're still looking at that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get some windows in there if we can. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a, an asset. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Still muted. Um, I think that would be good to have windows on the on those outside walls if you could, and because they it just would maybe echo more the older building or just make the windows more in scale. Those windows on the corners and in the recesses you know they to me they don't really relate to the older building at all and I understand you you want something maybe that's lighter and mm -hmm. um, has more windows um, and the one other thing that struck me was I, I like that you've done this sort of complicated cornice at the top but I think there's something maybe if, if it weren't white I wouldn't think it was really kind of odd looking just the, the 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 width of that fascia board or the height of it or something yeah. just seems like it's too heavy a crown on it or something but again if it were a darker color you know a gray or something it might you know blend in more you know not stand out quite as much but I do like that you tried to at least have that cornice detail there yeah we have details to work out for sure yeah um, so yeah. the height of that is something we're, we're we'd be playing with um, and certainly, I can't imagine it's going to be white, but it's, so yes, I agree. Anybody else? No, I just thought that the, I, the National mm -hmm. Park Service had specified that, um, you know, uh, additions or buildings that are uh, joining historic buildings you know, should be differentiated. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't look like they're trying to imitate, you know, the historic building. You should be able to differentiate between the two. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this design does accomplish that, uh, you know, using the brick uh, in the recesses and the uh, heavier cornice at the top um, refers back to the original building. So, um, you know, I thought that, you know, it meets, it meets that standard, I, th I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Could, could you show the, the one other view you had, which I think was maybe looking at it from the other side yes. or how it goes, because that gives us a sense of how they, um, and is the, um, to the left, that sort of modern, is that like a new entryway or what? What is that, that? I don't know. Josie might know. I mean, it's already there. <laughs> yeah, it's been there for um, probably, I would say that was 70s or 80s. It may yeah, we be later put than that. As part of our elevator tower upgrade. And I don't remember the exact year. I can certainly yeah. provide that to the, the report in the next meeting. I'm um, not talking about the tall thing. I'm talking about the lower yeah, thing that has glass. Yeah, it, it, uh -huh. it came with the tower. That's where our elevator oh, machine. Oh. Is, and it has oh. an accessible ramp. So when we started making these more oh, okay. ADA accessible, so it was, I mean, I, 
I want to say it was 20 or 30 years ago, but it could be more. I'm not exactly sure. And I, I can find that out. Yeah. But that um, everything from, you know, where that brick touches the new metal panel is all existing. And Roy, I don't know if you want to mention that we were going to replace the, the windows in the existing building um, because there's also asbestos and lead behind behind them, but we were going to replace them with more historical um, looking windows that we had already, you know, that we had previously brought before the committee and other projects to bring back the historical view of the building. That's a good point, Josie. What we're trying to do is make the, all the buildings we're working on consistent with the same style of window um, mm -hmm. because they've already been approved by you folks uh, for the other buildings. And, and most all these buildings were built in 1922, 23, um, with additions in 37 and 44 and a few later than that. Um, so we're trying to, as we go through the campus, we're trying to bring them all up to the same standard. Craig, Dylan, Harvey? Jonathan, any more questions? I have something to suggest. I'm, I'm one of the uh, onlookers here. Why don't you move up both things? If, if you're trying to, um, uh, to have the buildings echo each other, one thing you might think about doing is on the old building, put some of these vertical stripes that you find in the new building say around um, the tower that has the uh, elevator in it, or some of these blank walls, you could, you could echo um, the two buildings by actually adding something that wouldn't cost very much to the old one. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, anybody um, else? How many comments, Craig? Well, I've got kind of a high altitude question here. I, I'm not sure being this issue is in Hamden County, and I'm not sure this is well known around here, but the largest psych, psych hospital was just recently purchased in Holyoke, an old nursing home is going to be demoed and a new huge facility is about to be built. Has this been coordinated at all with that? It just doesn't seem to be, this seems to be totally separate and unknown. Did not, yeah, these right. projects aren't no, the nursing home. So, oh, this is the, 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 the uh, you know, the asylum on a hill. Um, so I, if you're referring, I'm not sure which one you're referring to. This one is a federal facility. And uh, as far as I know, it's the only uh, federal facility in Western Massachusetts. And there's obviously other BAs in Massachusetts, right. Boston area. And we do not coordinate with state or local um, necessarily in terms of building architecture, for sure. Um, we don't coordinate with those agencies. Oh, that, that's what I thought, but it, it does sound, it sounds unusual that, that this is taking place when the, the largest psych hospital is going to be under construction in Western New England shortly, five miles away. It just seems incredibly, I don't know, uncoordinated, but that's, beyond the service of our panel. So I don't wanna get on a tangent here, but it is, mm -hmm. that's what struck me about this project. This is, this is unbelievable to me. But, oh. but no, Craig, like, is, the, is the facility that you're talking about actually a veterans facility or is it just a psychiatric hospital know. for the general public? Right, it's, a, it's just the standard project being built by Bay State Health Systems. Yeah, so this is yeah. focused on veterans. Right. right. Yeah. And, and this is a, a typical like psych hospital. Um, I, I have a hard time explaining it as an engineer to, you know, because uh, it doesn't, 
sink into me, but the residential program is more as it's not as an acute psych. It's a residential program for people that have, you know, kind of they're between the two worlds of acute and, you know, living on, you know, independently. And this kind of bridges the gap and, and provides people some long-term, well, you know, to me, long-term, you know, months uh, or so of a stay that kind of stabilizes them and also provides them skills to, to live independently. So it's not an acute ward um, necessarily. Mm -hmm. Although we do have those on the campus as well, but not not for not you know we have twenty patients or so for those. Are there other questions or comments on the commissioner's part? Um, Roy and Josie, do you feel like we're, you're getting enough commentary from us? Is there anything else we can help you with at this point? It, and we'll, we'll be seeing, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, it, it sounds like the metal panel approach um, is uh, reasonable and acceptable to you folks. Um, that was one of our concerns that you would, uh, that you would find that acceptable. Okay. I'm sorry. The and what's talking? <laughs> I just all of a sudden, what's the metal panel that you're referring to? The exterior um, wall system. The oh. exterior wall system of the addition is insulated metal panels. They're textured like you can see there. Um, oh. And not oh. masonry. Oh, okay. And it's not wood. Okay. No, ma'am. Ah. Oh, wow. And it meant the other side of the street, which I mean, which is, you know, a very tiny two lane street. It's not like a big street um, that has all of these residential units, you know, longer than than building seven here. It's, it's you know, I don't know, 10 or so units next to each other, um, like a big apartment complex type thing that has similar to this metal panel. So it will complement kind of both sides, the historical side and this, you know, more contemporary side. Could, could I add something else in, um, which is this. Um, Why don't you get in the picture? Sure, sorry. Um, so um, one of the people present um, suggested that maybe you shouldn't have two hospitals very close. But I think we have to remember that um, everything west of uh, the river um, really doesn't have very many large cities. And so to me, it makes all the sense in the world if you're going to have two hospitals that they should be somewhere near, um, near where, where they're being planned to, to be. Okay, thank you for that comment. Um, this is, it's really um, beyond the scope of what we're looking at here. Um, we're not here to decide whether this hospital should um, be replicated in Holyoke or not. Um, it, and it's beyond our um, purview. But um, I think if other people have any comments, um, we, should, we should issue them at this time. Uh, we need to move on the, in the agenda. And I would just make one final comment um, on my behalf that the metal panels that are kind of mimicking the brick, um, I just would ask you to consider thinking about an alternative color perhaps or texture just um, to Barbara's point, or I'm sorry, Pauline's point, which is that we don't wanna to try to replicate the historic structure. We really wanna to try to emphasize the historic character of it in, in one way of doing that is to um, create something that's a contrast. Um, and so the color might also be a way of doing that as well. Okay. But just to, for you to consider. We had several different colors we've so we're not looking a, at. Um, okay. And I heard yeah, I mean, I, I can, can't speak to the other. Go ahead. I heard a comment back, something about the, the more red color was better. I don't remember where I heard that from, but um, that uh, was any rate. from our VA historical committee. Who uh, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, we don't want to. We don't want to. Yes. Yeah. But the, 
it did have a different color. So we'll look at that. Yep. We'll, okay. We'll yeah. I mean, it's just, it might, um, you know, maybe it's more of a complementary color rather than one that's just trying to reflect what, what the old buildings have on them. Yep. Yeah, okay. No, I, I like it. Okay. Do other people have any more comments and then we'll move on? And then, so uh, Josie and Roy, we'll be seeing you again sometime in the next few months. Absolutely. Yep. Probably within the next two to three. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much thank for your you. feedback. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it very okay. much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Um, we have a couple more items on the agenda and it is almost 6.30, so um, we'll move along here. Um, the next is one of the topics that we wanted to talk about. Um, having a lot of trouble with my Zoom tonight. Uh, we wanted to talk about um, is part of our bring everybody up to speed effort. And this is um, an overview of the demolition review. And um, Sarah had prepared just a quick summary of this. Um, This is one of our responsibilities. Um, we are facing this more and more these days um, as interest in North Hampton is a wonderful place to live is um, expanding. And we have a number of older properties that um, people are finding to be not quite as suitable as they would like them to be. And um, we've, we've, even got, we've had a number of demolition applications in the last, um, couple of years, I would say. Um, so this is one of the ways that we try to protect the historic resources of the city. And um, if any of the other commissioners would like to weigh in on this, explain this, um, or if Harvey and Jonathan have any questions, um, you know, we'd be happy to answer them for you. Harvey, if you're speaking, you're muted. <laughs> I have a I have a question on the ordinance summary. The last line <clears throat> mentions Central Business Architecture Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah. Well, I think we better. Speak. How how is that put together, and how does that relate to us? So the. Um, the Central Business Architecture Committee is a, a separate city committee that reviews um, work proposed within the Central Business District. It does have a representative from the Historical Commission, and uh, that rep representative at the moment is Pauline. Speak up. So it's a separate entity. It is, yeah. Okay, thank you. So if a complete demolition yeah, is Pauline, do you want within us the Central Business District, then, um, then it's really like that. We have people here who want to speak about this. Go ahead. So what the, okay, the, we um, are going to be speaking about that. are going to be reviewing the the um, the project that's under consideration for demolition um, St. John's in just a minute. It's a, the next item on the agenda. We're just talking about the ordinance at the moment. Fine, thank you. Uh, you so I do have one question about the, so that made reference to the criteria and you all have made reference in some other context to the to the criteria of one thing or another. Where are those criteria written down? So that in the, the little little summary I put together, um, there's a hot link if you click where it says Northampton Demolition yeah. Ordinance that takes you to the, the full text of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And then same down below where it says significant building or structure. Uh, so there's specific criteria within the ordinance for what makes a significant building or structure. And then separately, one, once that happens for uh, criteria that the commission might want to look at when they're considering whether a de demolition delay would be appropriate. And, and so around that, around that link, are there, I mean, like, is there a book that's got all the criteria put in somewhere or a, a web address that has the criteria for the, like the window criteria, and the demolition criteria? Is there a place that I can see all that? Uh, so it's just within the ordinance. So the demolition ordinance doesn't have a, um, 
a design guidelines booklet like the Elm Street Historic District does. It's not as comprehensive as that, um, but it does contain some criteria for what makes a building significant or what the commission might want to look at within the universe. They could consider when they're looking at whether a building is significant and would make more sense to be preferably preserved. Gotcha, thank you. And Harvey, just to uh, comment on that, to make it a little more complicated, um, we're often, and others should just weigh in on this as well. It's also it's often not an easy uh, call um, yeah. because there it's a I'm not saying it's subjective so much, but um, it's not completely objective. I guess I would say um, you know we recently reviewed a demolition application for a property in Bay State, and um, you know the house had a lot of and um, uh, modifications made to it. But um, when you peeled away um, a lot of those, there was some original fabric there that was very important to the history of that community. And um, we sort of, we came to the decision that we, that you know, the developer needed to give us some sec second thoughts. Um, this is one reason why Dylan is so valuable. I don't know if he's still on or not because I know he's not feeling well, but um, he provides a really valuable role to the commission when we have a demolition application because he'll look up the building and its history and its owners and often tell a really uh, very as detailed as possible story about it. So we have the full picture. Yeah. He's a great resource to us. Um, but again, it's not always an easy decision. Sure. And one of the things I think that we've come up against recently is um, some of the demolition is coming up against uh, the zoning ordinances. And we don't have any, as a, you know, as the historical commission, we don't have any control over what the zoning says. So if the zoning is allowed, um, allows, you know, uh, um, if a property is demolished, a big replacement, a, a, a building that looks much different, that changes the character of the neighborhood. Right now, we don't, there's no way for us to weigh in on that. So we really have to stick with looking at the significance of the building um, and it's, um, importance to the history of the community and so forth. So um, it's an interesting process. And I think it's also, um, we're gonna, you know, we'd be refining it likely in the next few years. But does anyone okay. wanna add to that? And we can move on. Yes. yes, I would like to add a question about the ordinance. I've always been confused why historic buildings in the central business uh, don't have a demolition review. I mean, with the, see, the uh, central business talked about the building, but with the exception of the guests, no one mentioned the history. I mean, it seems to me uh, the history would have been important. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but that's, their, that's the way the central business district operates. They don't have, you know, they don't have a, a demolition review. It's so, you know, I'm sorry to, to say that. I don't, I don't agree with it, but that's what it is. But I mean, there should so, be an explanation the, the for why it is district, the way it is. The central business district is looking to, so the central business architecture committee has its own set of design guidelines for projects within the central business district. And they apply those guidelines to new projects. They, they don't apply the demolition delay process in the same way. I mean, they don't even consider the historic aspects of the building. They don't. They're, they're looking at the, the guidelines that, that they have to work with. Are you done? You can say this. I'm going to say this. Okay. And so, Fred, this brings up a really good point. You know, we're going to be um, hopefully engaging in some um, long range planning for the commission and the historic resources of the city in the next, the coming years. Um, this is one item that I think um, would be appropriate for review. You know, is it really working? Um, is should the ordinance be modified? Um, these are all questions that I think would, um, are certainly worth asking mm -hmm. and um, we'll record them as uh, items that we'd like to see studied further. Mm -hmm. um, just I, one other thing, Harvey and um, Jonathan, just uh, so you understand, our demolition delay in Northampton is up to 12 months. And in that time, um, it, we don't have to um, place a 12 month delay, it could be less, but if, if in the if 12 months delay is issued, um, if the developer um, 
can figure out a way to modify his proposal, um, think of another way to use the building, they can come back to us and we can consider lifting the delay. Um, but that's, there's a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, I have a question. This, this is John, is it, it would it be appropriate time to ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Certainly. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, so we're going to talk about St. John Cantius after this. But you're talking about yes. the ordinance and your mm -hmm. and your authority right now. And I just wanted to know if when the central business district was extended to include, you know, the the, the this other building. Did anybody know that that meant that there was not gonna be any oversight by the historic commission on the demolition of that building? Did that, did, did that occur to anybody? I'm just curious. Can answer that question. Pauline, do you know, Barbara know. or uh, Sarah? And yeah. anytime the, um, it, it would be the same thing as when the local historic district was extended. Uh, so in, in the same way that the central business district applies their, their guidelines to propose demolitions there, mm -hmm. um, the, the local historic district would also apply um, the, the guidelines. Um, okay. Well, when I guess projects are proposed. So it, right. when those boundaries change, that, that's an automatic thing. I guess changed. part of what I'm hearing is that some pe many people in the city and maybe even some members of the commission weren't aware that they were ceding some of their authority about demolition when they create these, these districts uh, like this. And that that is something that as you're right, Madam Chair, you should, you should address that in the future because who else should have uh, more to say about it, about the destruction of historic buildings than the historic commission. Mm -hmm. And also, if a you know if the if a permit within the or sorry if a if a project within the central business district is found by the central business architecture committee not to meet those guidelines, that demolition can be prevented until a project is proposed that does or or until um, that building is is reused in the in the plans. So that can go even beyond the twelve months that the historic commission has available to it. But I, I didn't think that they had uh, a, the ability to postpone the demolition absent uh, any reason, which you, know, which you do. If you, if, they, that they don't, that's not something that they're looking at. They're looking but, at the, the entirety of a project and how right. it meets but, the But you, were, you would be able to say, what, did you have the authority in that, on that piece of property and again, we're talking about that later, you would be able to say, well, we don't know all the answers. We could, we need to wait. The demolition needs to, needs to proceed more slowly, right? Oh, only up to a year. Yeah. And then up, when, once the year is ended, then all that's right. off at that point. Right. Okay, thanks. It strikes me as a newcomer that we've, we're into a real issue here and I'd like some guidance as to what we do about it. I, I'm not suggesting we have a long discussion now and a vote, but it strikes me that this could be somewhat urgent. Maybe it should be on the agenda for next, next time. I don't know. I'd like some guidance on that. Can I make so Jonathan, are you talking about the demolition ordinance in general? Um, or, or just around the St. John's project? Oh, in general. In general, okay. Can I make a comment? It's Claudia. Yes. Hi, I just wanted to support uh, what John was just talking about, that idea, but also to add to Fred's, beyond the building, it seems to me, the historical commission, it's, the building is part of an environment and somehow looking at the whole neighborhood, the whole city as it were, and what impact removing it has, not just to say, is the building significant, but is the configuration of the neighborhood going to be altered in a way that would just be inconsistent? You know, like it, it's removing the building 
will have a significant impact on whole the whole neighborhood. So beyond the building, I think the neighborhoods, the neighborhoods are very significant. So I just want to add that. Yes. No, I think that that's really relevant, Claudia. And it's something that came up um, around the Bay State discussion as well, um, as well. that um, the question yeah. of whether the zoning as it's written now um, is really protecting their neighborhood character and, and what is neighborhood character and how is that defined and what can be done um, with our certain our zoning bylaw to try to preserve that. Um, that's all something that, you know, we're hoping to be able to look at more closely in the coming year. So, okay, thanks. Thanks, thanks so you. much. Thanks. I would like to, um, to speak up about this. I'm Maria Tabasco not Fred Zimnock, we're both here together. Um, and um, I, um, I was city councilor for Ward 3 for, um, I think, three terms. And before then, mm -hmm. I, I was on the school committee for a very long time. And um, I, I know this neighborhood well, obviously. I've lived here 50 years. And um, I can tell you that uh, we got um, we got uh, tricked here in the neighborhood about um, about that piece of property that includes St. John Cantius. Um, what happened was that um, a group of people came to us and said, um, "How about we uh, develop some uh, some housing in here?" And the neighbors went along with that uh, because the rectory was where, what they wanted to take out and put some houses in. And, but we made it clear that we wanted St. John Cantius to remain. Um, and I feel as if we were tricked. Um, um, another said after, after the housing was agreed upon, it was also agreed at the same time that the church would not be destroyed. And the church has a significant um, meaning to um, the Polish community, not just in this town, but all over the whole area. And in fact, when they were talking about what would they do with housing, we also, all of us, um, the people who proposed the housing and the neighbors, um, we did a significant walkthrough of the church. And we talked about things that could be done with the church that would enhance the neighborhood, that would in fact fit with the zoning um, and namely the zoning of, um, of uh, the usage of that building for something other than housing. Um, and so I feel like the neighbors have gotten um, really hornswoggled on this one. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, it's not sufficient to just say, oh yeah, well, if we don't sort it out in a year, too bad, we'll tear, tear down the church. One of the things that's happened here has to do with timing. Um, we, we've been in a, in a situation with COVID that really nothing could go forward very easily on St. John Cantius. And so at the very least, um, we need a great deal more time to talk this whole issue through. I personally find it just appalling to think about tearing down this church, which was the central gathering point for the Polish community, not just in Northampton, but the entire area to tear it down and put up as they proposed in our last discussion, three or four super nice buildings for rich people to buy and live in. This whole thing just is completely, um, it, it's, it's not, it's not actually um, the sort of thing that we would expect to happen in Northampton. To have a building that was supposed to be part of central business 
torn down so that a few people could enjoy um, a wealthy place to live. I say this as a former city councilor. And I might add a person who continues to be important uh, to this area of Northampton. Mm -hmm. yeah, Can I, I be a bit obstinate and go back 10 minutes? Thank you. And we're discussing a specific issue now, but <clears throat> I ask, it looks like there's something wrong with the demolition ordinance in general or something limiting. And I ask, some guidance where we go with that and I don't think you had a chance to respond to that. So the um, Jonathan the, the demolition ordinance that the historical commission would be considering just doesn't apply in, in this instance so the the proposed demolition of the the building within the central business architecture district is considered by another committee and they have a separate set of criteria that, that they regard. I understand. So the demolition that. ordinance, it isn't, isn't, um, isn't a factor in, in this particular discussion. I understand that, but there's something, maybe it needs more study, but there's something contradictory there or something that fall, can fall between the cracks. I'm, I'm not claiming any expertise, far from it. But I think there's an issue that goes beyond the particular case that people are rightly upset about. I have to agree with Jonathan, and that is that uh, for historic buildings in the central district area, there seems to be no historic review. And, you know, at the last meeting for central business, talking about St. John Cantius, if it wasn't for the guests at the, at the, uh, at the meeting, the historic nature wouldn't have been considered. And you know, there's other buildings in Central District which are historic. If they came under demo, if they came under rebuilding. What would happen? Would we consider the historic nature of those buildings? I think there's a missing missing part of the ordinance. I agree with Jonathan. Yeah. Well, as a member of the, you know, re well, a relatively new member of the Central Business District. Um, I feel your frustration and disappointment with what's going on with the church. And I know that I, there was an article when um, the church was purchased that they were going to be preserving it um, and finding different functions for it. And then all of a sudden, it's no longer on the table. Instead, they're going to be demolishing it. So, um, you know, I can, that certainly is frustrating and uh, disappointing. And especially for, you know, I'm on the historical commission and I would love to see these historic buildings preserved. So it's, uh, you know, heart wrenching, but I'm glad that um, Mr. Dunn was at that last meeting and, um, you know, presented many different options for the new, for the new owner of the church, um, along with explore, you know, the possibility that they explore the tax credits for preserving the church while finding different uses for it. And so I'm, you know, at this point, I'm yeah. You know, until the next meeting, I'm uh, I'm up. I, I'm hopeful that you know they will have done the, some homework there, and they'll see that uh, the church is is worth preserving. And not only is it worth preserving, but that um, it will you know it'll be consistent with their goals for you know financial goals for whatever it is they wanted to do with that property. Mm. Mar Martha, since yes. discussion, if this discussion has proceeded, I see that Marie has raised her hand very politely and is waiting. So if you're recognizing people to speak, I don't yes, know if I, noticed I noticed that. Raised. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you saw it. Yeah, I see it. And thank you, Barbara, because my connection is very bad tonight. Marie. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you all for your service. Um, I want to echo. Um, is it Jonathan? Jonathan, and 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 this this direction that you're hope, focusing on that there is some kind of a disconnect between the fact that we you that the historic commission has no role to play at all because part of the city is designated downtown business. Um, so I would urge you all uh, to try to 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 make that a little to try to bring that into your purview if you can in the future. 
Um, I, I also, um, so I wanted to, so you're finished with your ordinance discussion. Are we talking about the church now? <laughs> we have been all along. We kind of transitioned. I didn't okay, get a right. chance. In the okay. feeble connection I have, I didn't get a chance to do an official transition, um, but yes. You know, I, I, I've sat through the meetings of the Ward 3 group and the, and the downtown business district com committee um, discussions. And I also went to the, the public meetings that were held about the potential projects for the project because I actually share my driveway with whoever is going to be building and living on that Holly Street property. And Claudia, I, I, I not Claudia, but um, uh, Maria, and I, I, I don't remember O'Connell ever promising not to knock down the building. I remember that the first owners who put the pro proposal up to build the 55 plus did the walkthrough and they did say, we have plans to make it into a restaurant or we're gonna do this or that. But O'Connell never promised not to knock it down. They just said they, were, they wouldn't be developing that part of their property till they got this piece of the project off the ground. So I remember that very distinctly because I asked, that was Andrew Crystal. Um, um, so I just, I just, for clarity's sake, I don't have any recollection of them ever promising not to destroy the building. Um, I also am perplexed. I said this, I don't know if you were at that meeting, Pauline, but um, the Ward 3 group got together and then they wrote a note, a letter, but I don't think it reflected the whole neighborhood. I think that my heart is breaking every day since they shut the church for the, the Polish American and church community which watched the church abandon them basically. Um, and that was on the church. They let it sit empty for almost 10 years before someone bought it to develop it. And I can say, I bought my house and restored this house at 36 Phillips Place and had to spend a lot of money uh, to address the neglect that the church had, had visited upon this house that was built in 1848 or 1850. So I'm saying that there's a history here that we need to tell the whole history that, that th this building, that building are not in great shape. I tried to look through and they've gutted it already down there. There's no, they've taken out this stuff. They've already, they've already stripped the church of all this detail. So I guess I'm just, um, I'm feeling everyone's pain, but I wanna know what's realistic. I know that you have no teeth in this. You can't requ require them to not tear it down. You have no purview over this. I know the downtown business district oversight committee has a very narrow role. They are there to enhance growth in this neighborhood. The city decided for us to rezone Ward 3, this part of Ward 3, and they want infill and they want as much growth as possible. So that's their, that, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that, that oversight committee to simply say, does it meet our criteria for our growth? So, you know, Claudia, um, I don't think that the city is is, is is invested in maintaining historic nature of any neighborhood. They have plans and they want to see that, that idea uh, realized. So they will push as much as they can to take away any barrier for as, any development possible. You know, I mean, I, I hate to say this because I sound so uh, pessimistic, but when I heard they were going to be taking down the church, my thought was, well, can we at least get them to make the condos that face Phillips Place look Victorian in some way or be in keeping with the neighborhood? And part of me said, well, that will help keep the residential neighbor, that will help create more of a residential note as people enter into this new historic Pomeroy Terrace historic district. So I was thinking that way, that this was maybe it was, it's a horrible thing to say, but I'm going to say it. I was thinking maybe it could help maintain the nature of our neighborhood to see it be more housing and high-end housing because it would at least signal the, you know, I don't know, something nice to look at. And I'll, I'll let it go. So thank you. Thank you, Marie. So we just have a few minutes left. Um, I wanted to just make a couple of comments. One is that um, you may or may not know, um, in addition to St. John's, uh, our local historic district, which is mostly on Elm Street and also the old Clark School property, um, we have uh, two Catholic churches that are both pretty much empty. And one at, the, we're at one at the very Southern end or Eastern end and one at the Western end too. So it's very much a concern of ours. Um, the other thing that I think the preservation community statewide, I can't speak beyond that, but statewide is um, beginning to realize and think differently about is that the demolition delay um, is really a kind of a punitive, it's a punitive um, tool. 
And there are many um, more um, aggressive tools, I guess I would say, that would help in, that that would help um, encourage developers to preserve buildings, uh, give them incentives to preserve buildings, and that's really, I think, one thing our commission. Um, needs to start looking at because these concerns have become so, so um, you know, prevalent. Um, you know, here we are down on Holly Street. A couple of months ago, it was you know Bay State. Before that, it was another property in Bay State. Uh, before that, it was Con Street. So not Con's Finn, excuse me. Um, so I think um, taking a more positive approach to this is 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 one way of dealing with it. Maybe a better way, and we'll be certainly looking at that as we um, do some planning over the next year or two. Um, we need to end in a few minutes. So if um, I think Sarah's been recording all of these comments, and obviously the meeting's been recorded, so we'll certainly take all of these to heart. And um, as we move forward with our um, looking at all of these issues will certainly um, keep them in mind. I would like okay. to ask um, for you to listen to Fred. One other comment. And then we... <laughs> He's been waiting. Well, I have more than a few minutes to say. So uh, I, I was going to talk about the history of the church, uh, <laughs> but that's going to take a couple or three minutes. I don't know what your time limit is. See What's your time limit? Does he Wait, we're ending at seven and we have a couple more things to do. So okay, well I'll I'll pass um, on my comments. All right. I'll may I may I please may I propose that the historical commission take some action about St. John Cantius, send a letter to the downtown business uh, architecture committee or whatever it is, uh, weigh in, use the power that you have as a group of people who are who understand these issues to inform them to give uh, the, other, the people on that committee the, the benefit of your expertise and your uh, background, because uh, it seems like you don't have anything else that you can do except weigh in, but I wish you would. I, I, I really wish you would. You know, we own, we own- That's certainly something we could consider. Okay. Consider, continue. I was just going to say. I think we, we need we need as a dis, as a commission we need to have a discussion about that. And so um, I don't know what the time frame for the demolition of this church is. Does anybody know that? The next the next meeting is in the next. Um, I think it's I think it's around April thirteenth. I don't have it written uh -huh. down. So yeah, that's when sixth. something may be decided. Yeah. It's April sixth. No, I mean, is it April sixth? Yeah. I think that. Um, hmm. Uh, oh, uh, Sarah had mentioned that um, we uh, the business, the central business district, will not um, give permission for demolition until uh, the buyers come up with a viable plan that's been approved. You know, that's been approved. So, and at the last meeting, they didn't have much. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this could go on uh, depending on how quickly. Uh, you know, they've got their stuff together. I don't know. But if, if a, a letter is going to be written by the Historical Commission, it has to be written soon. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I would like to suggest that at the next meeting, we discuss item seven on today's agenda. Maybe it'll lead to item eight, but let's discuss item seven. Because okay. I don't think we have. We've, we've gone into item eight and understandably so. But let's discuss item seven coolly and rationally and all the rest of it. Okay, that sounds like a good solution. Um, well, I'm. did the, any of the commissioners want to weigh in on sending a letter at this point? I mean, we haven't had a chance to discuss it amongst ourselves, um, um, you know, I think we, we can draft something. I, I don't know how thoughtful it will be because we don't, again, we haven't had a discussion amongst ourselves about it. Um, what are people's thoughts? Well, could we, since Pauline is our representative on the uh, Central Business District, can we um, 
you know, delegate her to represent our interests or to, um, you know, be certain. I mean, certainly there was a lot of discussion of the history of the building and the historical importance and uh, just to really delegate her to really make sure that these issues are brought up and discussed thoroughly by that committee. So the only to the extent that that is within the purview of the Central Business Architecture Committee. Right. Um, so because they have their, their own set of design guidelines um, and their own right. criteria to consider, um, they couldn't really yes. look at issues beyond that. So if the Historical Commission wanted to say something specific about the history of the church, that would be better submitted as a public comment from the entire body. Okay. Well, I think it could be useful for us to at least have our comment in there. Again, I don't, because we haven't discussed it, I don't know how, um, well, who would draft this or again, how well drafted it would be, but. Um, well, I think that we're all, on, I, I think we're all on the same page here. Um, you know, that we feel that, you know, we'd like to see it, uh, see the church preserved. Um, and so I don't know how much more discussion there needs to be. I mean, even though I know that the, the, the um, our, our demolition or the city demolition ordinance does not apply in the central business district, we, we our comment could say that if this were under our purview, we certainly would have found it historically significant and preferably preserved that there's no question in our right. mind that that's Right. I mean, may, that may be presumptuous to say, we know that's what our vote would be, but we feel that that would be the consensus. And, you know, even though they don't use the same standards, that could be our comment mm -hmm. that we think it's preferably preserved and would want demolition um, delayed if possible. But I know that with that committee, the delay comes when you don't approve of what they are the suggesting are. to put in its place. I understand it's a different standard. Right. We have so is that consensus that the commission would like to submit a public comment to CBAC I support that, that. that says that it's a, an important historic building and references those criteria within the, the demolition review ordinance? Mm -hmm. May I ask? I would be in favor. Uh, I don't know if you're voting or if I could ask a question. We have to make a motion to vote, so go ahead. Oh, um, um, I'm just, uh, I came a little bit late to this, so I'm sorry if you've already addressed it, but I felt like at the last um, central business meeting that the um, O'Connell was tasked with actually consulting with the historic commission about the building and about um, funding resources for um, historic credit. So it sounds like maybe they haven't, um, explored that option through the historic commission. Is that correct? They might have, I, I don't know what took place at that meeting, but they okay. might have been requested to speak with the state historic commission. Um, the the tax think, credits okay, are, that are, could be, are I state. think that was the state, right. right. It was not the, not Northampton. Okay. Thank you. That's curious. Mm. Okay. Um, well, I, would someone like to make a motion that we um, prepare a letter to send just to express our concern about the historical importance of this building and request every attempt to be made to try to find a solution where it can be um, so moved. preserved? I'll second okay. that. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? All right. Oops. Sarah, do we do need to roll call it? Yes. Um, Martha? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Dylan? Dylan dropped off. I don't okay. see Dylan. Uh, Craig? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. And Pauline? Yes. Okay. Okay, um, just one final thought about that. Um, and then we're gonna, we'll end the meeting. I, I, just, I just want the commissioners to think about this. Um, we have to be thinking about buildings like this one and others in the community that are very important and get out front of their possible removal. 
Um, that is one thing I think as a commission, we have a responsibility to do. And we need to look at all of the different tools available to us to do that. Um, if we don't, um, we're always gonna be reacting to situations like this. And um, we can't, you know, we can't keep up with the, um, the will of the uh, developer, uh, the interest of the city. Um, so we have to really set some priorities and figure out how we're going to get out front of it. I'll just end it with that. And I'll just add something really quick. I, this is uh, why it's especially important to undertake a comprehensive preservation planning process. You know, there, there are a lot of issues with the demolition ordinance. It, it can't be everything to every situation. It's designed for just one particular situation and, and it doesn't do everything that, that it should. Um, but there are a lot of tools right. and possibilities that, that haven't been looked at. Um, and it will be really important to hear from the community about what the tools for preservation are and then look at ways that we can achieve those. So hopefully when we do get funded by the CPA, I encourage everybody on the, the Zoom call today to participate <laughs> in those discussions. Yes, is, 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 when, is, when are those um, applications, the, the decisions due? Uh, so those final recommendations if will it, be made by the Community gonna... Preservation Committee oh, next week um, and then we'll need to be voted on by City Council. Oh, good. Thank you. Barbara, and by the way, Barbara did a great job presenting um, the application to the CPC. Okay. Um, mail. Any mail, Sarah? No. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else would like to um, bring up before we can adjourn for the evening? And then we'll be meeting again in April, at the end of April. Hello. Hello. Yes. John, uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, I have an opportunity to uh, make comment to you. I don't know whether this is within your sphere of influence or within your jurisdiction of activities, but nevertheless, I'd like to bring it to your attention. Perhaps in some way it is, but uh, um, I'm here uh, uh, asking if your commission is planning to issue a statement of concern for the preservation of the site on Hatfield Street where Native American artifacts were discovered dating back eight to 10,000 years ago. Your uh, public support, your public statement of support would be appreciated by some 55,000 petitioners to the city. This amazing discovery reveals that humans habitated Northampton some 3,000 years before the world's first civilization in Mesopotamia. The site has permanent value and should not be carelessly destroyed. It should be preserved further for research of the indigenous population that was here many, many years ago. So I'm asking if your historical commission could review the findings and publicly support the preservation efforts that are presently underway by the 55,000 individuals and the Native American communities that are federally recognized that have expressed desire to save their culture. And it's here. These sites are not easy to find, but we have one, happens to be in Northampton. And many of the scientific folks are real excited about the find, but hope that the bulldozers will not prevail as presently uh, advocated and uh, I ask for your consideration to perhaps uh, publicly support the effort to preserve the site. And uh, if there is anything I can do to help in some way with information or whatever, I'd be glad to do that. But the overall benefit here will truly be of great benefit and significance to the city. Can and we put this I on the agenda? You're hearing me out. I'm sorry. Can Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yeah, we can we can put this on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, if if we have materials presented to us ahead of time that we need to have circulated as part of the agenda, yeah. 
We could certainly do that. I would appreciate that. And I think many, many others would as well. Thank you for okay. your help. Yeah, thank you, John. Okay, anything else? I, if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second that. All in favor by hand. Well, I'll say yes, because you can't see me. Oh, I guess I could have raised my hand. Oh, that's right. Sorry, Barbara. Here, I can, that's okay. I can raise my hand or I can, here we go. I raised my hand. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And thanks for everyone who participated in this. It's, um, it's great to hear people coming out and voicing their concern about, you know, the city's history. And um, we're making every effort we can to try to move things along in a better direction. So we appreciate it. Thanks, Martha. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody.